Okay. Welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministry. This is our second Saturday where we are commencing our teaching on pain. And, you know, we started off with pain. Why pain? Why pain is so necessary? Why pain is so important in, in, in a time, in a, in a culture, in a society where we all want a relief of pain? Because pain is something that we... We tend to want to move away from. We don't want to experience pain. We don't want pain. We don't want emotional pain. We don't want psychological pain. We don't want uh, uh, physical pain. We don't want any type of pain because pain is something that is, is like a curse. It's like a curse to us. However, pain is something that Yeshua embraced for us. It's, it's a trade, it's a trade-off, you know, and Paul made mention of it in Romans. Romans, when you go home, you can read Romans, the book of Romans. It's a beautiful uh, rendering on this forensic exchange of how he bore our sins and diseases. And because he now took it upon himself, now he gave unto us something what we could have never earned for ourselves, which is the righteousness of Yahweh in Christ Jesus. And that is a beautiful exchange. It's a paradox. It's a, it, 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 it perplexes the mind of human beings because Paul even make mention and he said, you know, the foolish things of this world confound the wise. And that is what the creator used. He used the foolishness of this world. So they, they, they look at the simple things and they say, that's too simple. To be God. That's too simple to be divine. But this is, is that which is so simple that is easily rejected. And this is what he said. This have become the stumbling block to what? To those who perish. This become the stumbling block. Because how could a man. Remember last week when we were talking and we talked about. Uh, the, from the Greek perspective. The, the word for. For, for crown or, 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 or pain is Stephanus, right? Which, which they got that root meaning of that word from Stephen, who was what? Who was martyred. Now, look at something. How you now could be, how that could be a crown to humankind in the act of what? Not receiving all this pain to the physical man. But that which is applied physically is now building a spiritual crown for an eternal end. For he charged it not to no one. He laid not to no one charge. So now, how could this be? How could this pain be applied to people and they not be protective of this life, which is what we know. All human beings, that is what they know. They know about this thing, what we call life, which we can't even explain. Scientists can't explain this thing we call life because that which we call life is inconclusive to mankind because of one aspect of our existence, which is our brain. They can't understand it. How could you be alive? What is to be alive? Because now, pain has traumatized the human race to such a degree that in order to justify their claim and their position, they say, well, okay, we have always existed. And because the pain that we're now going through, what is, it? is it as a result of what? Is as a result of... If you look at naturalism and which the the uh, the shamans and the Indians and they what they teach reincarnation is what you have done in the past life. So this is why now you're experiencing what? These painful activity. This is why you have poverty. This is why you have all these uh, different type of experiences. And they attribute those experiences to what? To karma or to atma. Mm -hmm. Atma is the actual events um, that you, um, yeah, atma, that the actual events that you're going through 
in your daily activity. Karma is what actually takes place as you're going through the changing life cycle changes. So that in itself, it bears on that philosophy of the Hinduistic concept of life. And so now pain in itself is not attributed to anything that is given a direction for your destiny. It is, it is now what? It is now, it is now st structured to, for what? For just to get rid of. You know, okay, I got to do this in this life. So this is as a result of what? Atman, these, um, I think it's Atma, if I'm remembering the word right. The event that takes place in this life. Because it's not karma. Karma is life changes, different life entity. But yet still they can never give a right understanding of how and why these things are going on. Now the scripture is clear concerning why pain is necessary. Why pain is necessary. And all these different philosophers, they come up with a whole number of different ideas in order to justify pain. Nietzsche, you have something to say? No, I was just looking up Atman. Yes, Atman is yeah, Atman. Is, is it Atman, right? The, the innermost essence of each individual. That's right, Atman, so I was right. So now, what, you, what, what, what these philosophers did over the age, one person that really stand out is Nietzsche. Nietzsche looked at all these events in life, and he said, you know what? This thing about pain is what has been given to us and we must experience it to the what? To the utmost. Because pain is all part of our experience. So now he took that to the next degree. Where now he seek to encounter and to disclose all pleasure in a painful fashion in order to ratify one state of existence. Because he just wanted to move away from this this idea of what? Of God. Because how could God be associated with pain? That is the paradox because pain has no type of relation to your hair wave here from man's perspective. But what most people don't realize is that without a contingent being, if there isn't any contingent being, then there won't be any pain. But once you have a contingent being, pain necessary follows. Anything that begin have the ability, the potentiality not to stay within that of its Position when it has been designed as a what? As a free will thinking agent. Mm. Human beings are the only creatures that has been designed, created as an independent free will thinking agent. So that in itself, being a contingent causal element necessitate what and will bring upon itself pain and pain become necessary because without freedom to be what you have been designed to be there isn't a contingent being there isn't. And most people, they say, well, okay, well, you know, I am made of who? I am made from who? From God. And if God made me, I am like? God. God. So this is where you get this whole concept of what? I am God. And they use the Psalms to say what? You are God's. But now, is that true? Can you be God? Does God make 
litter, God, as the craft dollars and these men and them say, and God has made you to be what? To be pain free. Now, if all these ideas are true, then how do we, or how can we live this life that Yeshua so set down in his scripture and he tell us now, for sure you will experience what I have experienced. So pain is something we don't want. Nietzsche culminate pain in all these different sexual acts. And, and Nietzsche was late, even as he, uh, he, uh, he bring back to memory what the early Greek, the Gnostic, and they what? Taught at the time of John and Paul and all these guys in the wild they were there. And they say we have the secret because everything was within that arena or that culture of what? Relay, re, relaying pain to another by the act of receiving this eternal what? Understanding or information of one's destiny. So this is what the Gnostic and all these different rabbis prior Christ coming into reality. So we're talking about AD before Christ coming into being. Because I have all these pain, but now Christ is coming and he is coming to do what? To culminate all pain. Every single pain. And we see that 